not strapped in. So in the <laughs> ranger, in the ranger, they try to dock between the ranger and the endurance, and people are just free floaty, not mm -hmm. safe. It's on straps, free floaty. Okay, okay. okay. taking control, approaching. Take the port, controls. Five hundred meters. Free floaty is. I'm I'm fine with it. Fine with it in space as long as you're moving at some constant velocity. Mm -hmm. Once Coop grabs the control stick, he's going to be accelerating. He's going to be shoving the ship around. And if you have people free floaty, then they're going to hit a wall. That's right. And this is on Earth. We have friction and gravity holding us down. So Coop. as maybe a, bo a boat or an airplane is rocking, we can stay pretty solid in our seats. We got a lot of leeway with that. But in space, if you're in the middle of your ship and it moves, you're going to stay put and you're going to hit the edge mm -hmm. of the ship mm -hmm. pretty quickly. It's not going to be pleasant. I mean, I mean, we can see it right here from this image. If the people are inside the Ranger, moving with the Ranger, once that Ranger docks with the ship, it's going to stop. And the right. people, if they're not strapped in, they're going to stop too, but against the wall. And this is assuming that everything goes according to plan. If Cooper has to make an emergency maneuver for some reason right. and That's back right. out, or who knows what, something could go wrong, and they're not strapped in, they're going to get, they could get flung around the cab, knocked out, permanently injured. Yep, mission's over. Two of our people right. died. Right. So they should be strapped in. All of everybody yeah. strapped in. Yeah. As soon as the docking ch -ch 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 done, clink, clink. green light, then go. Cool. Right? Unbuckle. Yeah. Just yeah. wait a little bit. Yeah. I feel that same way with airplanes. Like, yeah, well, everyone just chill. Like a little bit. Just like two minutes. We're, we're still taxiing. It's fine. I'm a, I'm a guy who gets up, pushes elbows, old ladies out of the way. That's right. Yeah. I get my baggage from yeah. the front. I keep my bags in the front of the first class, even though I sit in coach, whatever. Yep. I don't even buy a seat. I just stand next to the door. Sneak yeah. Yes. Yep. I, I wear I wear like a flight attendant suit. <laughs> Go sit with the pilots. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, who are you? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Whoa, don't ask it? questions. G? What is G? So they're doing artificial gravity through rotation of the ship. Okay. And I was wondering, could we calculate the G from this rotation rate? I put a timer here. Okay, yeah, we can try this. Okay, let's give it a shot. So I think we do not see a full rotation. I don't. I think it cuts away before there's a full rotation. Maybe we can get a half rotation in here. Okay, okay. Let, let's let's choose a time that is easy. So I'm going to mm -hmm. choose when this this access tube is vertical. Okay, I'm going to write this down. So that's five seconds and thirty five milliseconds. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How about then, when it goes? Yeah, let it play until it gets to the top. Yeah. That'll be a half revolution. Half revolution. There. Yeah. Okay, I like so that. that's 10. Yeah, I like that. 10 seconds, 86 milliseconds. Yeah. So then the difference is let's five, say five, five, five. sec five five point five seconds. Nice. So then yeah. the time for one revolution is now double that. So that's, that's 11? 11, 11 oh, seconds. That's nice. that's nice. Okay. Yeah, that's actually really nice numbers. Okay. So that's capital T period. And mm -hmm. the acceleration mm -hmm. for circular motion is velocity, the tangential velocity squared yeah. over R. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to get velocity out of this. So maybe we can rewrite that. Um, the tangential velocity for circular motion is R omega. Yeah. Okay. And so then omega to period is one over and two pi. Okay. So the angular frequency omega is. That's going to be two pi over the period, right? Okay. So, so, we, get, so we just save it as two pi over t. Two pi over t. Squared, squared up. Squared up because it's v squared. Mm -hmm. So then and v is equal to r omega. So we're looking at r squared omega squared over r. So now yep. we have r omega squared, mm -hmm. and we've calculated omega, the mm -hmm. angular frequency. So all we need two, only, two. That's going to be two pi over eleven. Yeah, that's quantity, our omega. quantity squared. Quantity squared. Now we need and to then, figure out the radius, right? Right. So we just need to estimate this distance from the center mm -hmm. of the circle out to the habitable ring. Right. Okay. So uh, I guess we got rangers here. Well, yep. And so and a ranger. How tall is a ranger? Well, I think if we if we go back to the previous and we look, I don't know. It looks like a person can sort of stand up in there with maybe a little bit of room to spare. 
Yeah, and I guess that's that's reasonable because you need space for people to stand, but you also don't want to have mm-hmm. like just cavernous waste of space. Right? So right. space spaceships are a little bit like a little bit cramped, right? Right. So uh, two meters, maybe. I mean, two, two meters. Yeah. Two meters is six six, I think. Well, two meters but, is is six. It's like maybe six three, six four. Oh, really? Something, that's not something okay. like that. Something so like then. That. So then that's, that's kind of reasonable. I don't know how tall right. these people are, but that's kind of reasonable. Right. So if this is two meters, the people are sitting in there. Yeah. About, you know. Yeah. And that's this picture. So let's assume that the thickness of the ranger is about two meters. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Oh, I um, guess I guess that's the internal cabin. We make it a little right. bit thicker. I don't know. Two meters is pretty close. Just two meters is pretty close, yeah. Yeah. 2.5 as most. Yeah. So approximately how many twos can we stack up to to make the radius, do you think, here? So there's one ship and then another one, maybe yeah. to get to the center. I Two, like that. Yeah. Three, three, four, four, five, six, maybe? Six. Okay, so that's six times two. That's 12. It's 12. Yeah. So, so 12. we're getting 2 pi over 11 seconds squared up times 12. What is that? Can we bring up a calculator? Oh, yeah, good point. I have a computer. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's do. What did we say? Yeah. We had, it was twelve times. No, no, no. Let's do this a better way. Okay. We yeah. have eleven. No. It's oh, yeah. Two. Pi. It's, yeah. Two, yeah pi. two. Let's do four pi squared. So we can do like four times three point one. Times three point one four. Times three point one four. Yeah. So that's divided four by a pi l- squared. Yeah, divided, by, divided 11. by 11 and then divide by 11 again. Why do we and divide then, by 11 twice? Because it's uh, 2 pi over 11 squared, whole thing. Because it's... Uh, I don't think it is. It's, it's omega squared r. Uh-huh. Oh, 11 was the seconds. Seconds. I see, I see. I see. 11 is the seconds, that's right. And, and then, then the whole thing is times 12. I see, okay. Yeah, got it. Okay. Okay. So this is some low. <laughs> this is some low. Whoa. We're we're looking for nine point eight meters per second squared yeah. in order to get Earth G, mm-hmm. and we got about one one. Now we did make some approximations with the size. I think our rotation period that was, was that was pr- good. That was really I think good. it was pretty solid. You're not. I don't think there's much error in that. But I think our, the error would be in our approximation of the radius. Right. But not not ten times wrong. That's right. Not ten times wrong. So I think the, the spin rate... What would they need? They, they would need to spin a lot faster. Oh, yeah, a lot faster in order to get the correct G. They would need the, to spin the Earth faster. G. So they would need to reduce... About three times period. faster. Because it's That's omega right. squared. Yeah. So you need, you need it to be one rotation to be about three or four seconds. That's fucking fast. That'd be fast. That's fucking yeah. fast. But I guess, I guess once you're inside the space station, you don't feel it. I guess there's the, also the possibility during the design phase they could just make the radius of the thing bigger, so that it doesn't have to rotate so fast. Yeah, about about ten times bigger. About ten times bigger. Maybe that's maybe you could do a combination, make it a little bit bigger, so the, and have a little bit faster rotation. Mm, somewhere but, in the middle. Yeah, I don't think they're getting full gravity in this this thing. Like Which I mean, it. I'm okay with. Like, there's okay. no reason why we needed to have we need to be Earth gravity in the thing, right? That's right. You just need some gravity so that, you know, liquids fall into their containers and you can sleep and all kinds of different things. You can things. walk kind of normally and... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Does sleep get messed up in low G? I don't know. I think... I don't know. But I think that there's some acclimation. I mean, you can sleep. There's not. You're not sleeping on anything. Right? You're just It's a float. Right. It would be unusual. Probably take some time to get used to. Mm. Right. I don't know, I'm sure. Yes, I remember back in the day, NASA was like, "Would people even be? Would people be able to sleep at all? Like, does the body need to have a gravitational direction?" But right. as far as I know, you just strap up against the wall. Mm-hmm, yeah, this is a classic scene. Classic scene that a bunch of other movies have used. Um, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. explanation of how a wormhole works. Let me show you how it works. So they say you want to go from here to there, but it's okay. too far, right? So a wormhole bends space like this, so you can take a shortcut through a higher dimension. Imagine for a minute that this piece of paper... Excuse me. uh, That's that's mine. 
So that, that explanation, the original one, was from the Interstellar, the movie we just watched. This one is from Event Horizon from 1997. Interstellar totally ripped off. Totally ripped up. Yep. Of you know, totally ripped off Event Horizon here. So let's watch. Let's watch this. Tractor piece of paper represents space time, and you want to get from point A here, oh. point B there. Now it's like, a, the, it's the like shortest distance. Exactly the same. A straight line. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. Shortest distance Wrong. between two points is zero. It follows <laughs> space so that point A and point B coexist in the same space and time. When the spacecraft passes through the gateway, space returns to normal. Yeah. Great explanation. Great. And, yeah. Great explanation. and I see no reason why a higher dimensional beings that live on higher dimensions wouldn't just do mm -hmm. this. Same as, as mm -hmm. same as we would do to an ant. Mm -hmm. I also think, so I think the physicist in Interstellar may have misspoken. He said it goes through an extra dimension. I'm not sure an extra dimension is necessary. I think you can have right. the complex geometry within the 4D space itself and be done with it. Like you don't need to, you can embed the 4D space into a higher dimensional space if you want to. But you don't have to. Like it can, it can the twisted well, space I mean, can exist on its own. As far as I understand. Well, I mean, it's 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 exactly this. Mm -hmm. So we exist in three dimensional space, but we can create a two D manifold, mm -hmm. a piece of paper, and then we can connect from one side of the paper to the other side of the paper without enforcing a third dimension. You just smush them together. Mm -hmm. So same idea, same logic, and you can do that. You can do that downward into one dimension. You can make a line fold on itself. But then go in the other direction and make a 3D volume fold on itself. I don't think you need to go through the fourth dimension. If you're a being in the fourth dimension, you can just compress three into itself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a cool explanation. Super cool. A little bit too close on the ripoff, but that's that's me. I think I've seen this in other movies as well. Right. So who's maybe, the maybe original? Put it in the comments if well, from all the other movies oh. that have done this. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else has a better picture. That's true. That's true. Maybe. Maybe maybe, maybe this is what humans can do because we we exist and our minds exist in a three D <laughs> world, so we can only map down to a two D thing and then do the paper fold. Right. By analogy. Yeah. Mm. Entering wormhole. This is right before they go into the wormhole from Saturn to the other galaxy. Yeah. So cool, they're going in the wormhole all sideways. Interesting that they, yeah, interesting that they try, they choose to like deorbit into it instead of just go straight. So look how warped space is. It's so cool. Um, it's hard for me to process what's going on in here. Right. I guess if space is that warped, all your intuitions about how space works have to be thrown out. And it's just sort of, how, how does this work? Yep. And <laughs> you're like, uh, we're on the other side. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Nebula. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 3D hole. Gotcha. 3D hole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it would look like a, the, there's like these rocky space outcroppings through space, the two space bumps. Yeah. That to me looks surfacey. Yeah, what is all this? Yeah. It looks like 2D surfacey. I don't know if there would be any like, surface it would just be like a warped 3d thing that you sort of just go through right Ooh, <laughs> i don't know boy. how to think about uh, it oh. <laughs> gosh so like in the most simplest vision i can it's like two sheets of paper with like a like a straw in the middle right and you mm -hmm. travel through the straw but i have no wood i have no idea how to, what to, what guess and, to put on yeah this. and if you're if you're in that going on the piece of paper in onto the straw mm -hmm. and then out the other side you have to stay within the 2d plane so you got the analogous 3d 3d straw and you're saying with you can only view it inside the 3d straw so you're getting all this warping going on you have to we'd have to take some intense study i think to get to the that's point right. where we understand it that's right off the cuff <laughs> not easy not easy but yeah, i don't would think it, these, would it be these... smooth or would it be textured like this I don't, I, the texture I don't think is right, but all this warping like down the tube where like galaxies are all, I think that- Warpy, warpy weird shapes up here. Yeah. 
I'm down with that. Whether they're the right warpy weird shapes. In fact, I, no I guess idea. I guess but. why would there be texture here at all? Texture suggests that there's actual mass there, but right. the wormhole itself does not need to have any mass associated with it. Right. It's just warp. It's just space. a pathway through space. Yeah. Right. So I don't know if there would be any surface. It would just be empty space. It would just be an empty space that you could just go through. Go through, yeah. And it would look all funk. All look funky. all funky, yeah. Like you would see galaxies all twisty shapes and depending on the angle of that you're positioned, it would twist mm-hmm. to some other shape. Interesting. Right. Yeah. That would be wild Super cool, though. to experience that. Whew. Super cool. The plan. This is their plan to go down to, which planet is it? The one with the big tidal waves. Oh, the water planet. Yeah, Miller's. Oh, yeah. Miller's planet. Yeah, let's watch. Here's Gargantua, here's Miller's planet. Instead of taking the Endurance into orbit around Miller's planet, which would conserve fuel, but we would lose a lot of time, we take a wider orbit around Gargantua, parallel with Miller's planet, outside of this time shift to here. And we take the Ranger down, we get Miller, we get her samples, we come back, we analyze, we debrief, we're in, we're out, we lose a little fuel, but we save a whole lot of time. Bingo, bingo, done. Sounds good. So I was so mad at the whole crew after watching this. So you have... The thing you actually do have is time, right? If you go down to the planet, what is it? Seven seconds is a month or whatever. The, seven seconds is a week. I don't remember it's, that. It's one, one hour down there is seven yeah. hours up here. Wait, no, it was, more than, it was one hour down there. It was like seven more than. Wait, what did I say? It, one, one hour down there is seven years up top. Right, right. So a huge difference in rates of time. Okay. So. What, what they should do is take a month, maybe two months, and just sit there and rep it out, plan it out, contingency it out. I see what you're saying. All the plans, rep, 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 simulations, rep, everybody sit. You know, what's going to happen? Who's, hey, hey, survey the planet. What's going on down there? Oh, there's tidal waves. Oh, what's going on? This is, yeah, this is a, yeah. This is a big plot hole. <laughs> rep the sh- out of it yep. plan the shit out of it so when it's time when it's game time when it's one hour to seven years everything is just clicking it's just no execute execute execute, ex- ex- execute execute and you and you've planned it out so much that if something happens you know how to improvise everybody's on the same page we're on the same team we've been repping this we've been planning it yep that's but right. they don't do that that's they right. just like make a vague plan and then fly let's go down let's there. go let's go like that you have so much time if you take a month here it doesn't matter. Or two months. It doesn't it's matter. Irre- it's so much worth. So worth it. Yep. So I was so angry at the team. What are they doing? Like, I guess. I guess. Oh gosh. How much? How much food do they have on the ship? They got. They got plenty. They got tons of food because they have tons of food because they're planning and setting up a colony, which means they have enough have enough food for several years. Right. So taking an extra right. month up here to figure things out, not a problem. Right. What right. are they doing? What are they doing? Plan it out. Because. Huh. All that time. If you could shave seconds, you're talking lots of time outside of the, the 60th of seven years. Yeah. Yeah. So come on now. So, yeah, this has consequences for how I get infuriated later on in the movie because, like, okay, plan your shit. Yeah, I did. I, I didn't <laughs> think about this. I did not notice this at all, but that's right. Plan your shit. Right. And wrap it out. Rep it out. I don't know if they have a simulator on the on the ship which may they may not have a simulator but i would be pencil and paper simulating like pretending to press buttons mental reps all kinds this of this is what we're gonna do we're gonna land we're gonna grab them we're gonna do this we're, if you have any troubles we're gonna get tars to do his robot roly thing it was super fast, super fast. <laughs> should have been doing that the whole time <laughs> right he just pulls the robot roly thing out of nowhere like that's an important like, aspect of the plan mm-hmm. we should have sent both the robots to just have them roll around done that's right. Why? why, why that? Right, and d- d- during the planning process, you're going to think of things like, like, oh, that's not the way we should do it. We should do it this way, and then mm-hmm. we should do it that way. We should do it that mm-hmm. way. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Instead, yep. they cowboy that. They job. cowboyed it. <laughs> that's right. They didn't even do a planet survey, so they don't know about the tidal waves. That's right. They could have. They could have looked around a bit and sound like, ah, oh, there's mm-hmm. multiple waves that could run around, and they're going. They're mm-hmm. super tall. Yeah. And here's some stills when they land after <laughs> freaking Cooper's cowboy maneuver. Cowboy shit. <laughs> How did they know that the sur- the water was only like yay thick? Uh, deep? That's lucky. That's super lucky. <laughs> they they could have right. they could have just sunk to the bottom. 
They could have just sunk to the bottom. I guess it does float, but then they're not going to like swim in their heavy spacesuits to go get the data. Right? That's right. That's right. So like, why, why, how, how, what was the plan here? What if the, even if it's like, Ooh. they thought it was this deep, <laughs> they thought it was this deep and it's actually six feet deep, which is actually, you know, still shallow. Yeah. But, you know, you're now submerged versus. Well, I mean, it's a problem because it's six feet deep is not going to work for these landing gear. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're going to get, it's going to have to free float that's on the surface. Yeah. And if it's free floating, which is okay because because mm-hmm. the Ranger does float, then mm-hmm. who's going to get out and go find the wreckage? And what right. if that wreckage wasn't our surface level? What if that wreckage, because it's like it's like steel or aluminum or whatever, mm-hmm. sunk to the bottom? Sunk to the bottom. And, and probably Case and TARS, they're probably heavier than water. They're going to sink. Then so, yeah. Yeah. So Good you, might not be, robots. Yeah, you might not be able to get them back if they sunk in the water. that's some cowboy shit. I did not realize it. <sighs> I was like, what the f***? <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm I'm down for cowboy shit, but just not this much. This is this is like mission ending stuff. That's right, especially when the time dilation is so extreme. The cowboy shit, you got you got to stow it, you know. Right, right. Leave leave that for man's planet. That's right. Leave <laughs> that for when when you got time to course correct. Yeah, right. That's right. Then they make a bunch of mistakes. Such a scientist, such a scientist, <laughs> obsessed with the data. That's dangerous shit happening. Like the data. <laughs> there's, there's an enormous tidal wave coming your way. Data, the data. <laughs> it's somewhere here. I'm gonna thrash around till maybe find it. The data, <laughs> the data. Uh, get your ass back to the ranger now. Rand, get back here now. You know what I've done in laboratory? I've done some dangerous shit for the data. <laughs> for the data. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they f*** up real bad here. So Bran mm-hmm. needs to listen to, I, I guess Coop's in charge of the mission. So she needs to listen, like, get back here, get back here now. Not, not f*** around in the water, trip, mm-hmm. and then she eventually is like, leave me behind. Like, you could have killed everyone with that escapade. And then the other scientist, the... Forgettable. Not guy. Rommel, the other guy, yeah, yeah. He like he gets the ship and then doesn't get on the ship. Like just yeah. get on the ship. Yeah, what was he doing? He was useless and then he died. That's right. Like he he, got, he the got there before Tars and Bran, and then he gets mm-hmm. washed away. Like, but you were there already. Like, get in the ship. Right. Get in the ship, strapped in. You're there's nothing else you can do. Right. Well, there's also it's issues me. with command structure. Who's in charge? <laughs> Like I mean, Cooper's, I mean, Cooper's the one who should be in charge, I think. I think so, because he's the pilot. Right. And he's the pilot, and he has the most operational experience That's true. in most of the situations. Right. But then he, he barks commands, and... They don't do it. Brand is like, I'm going to do what I want. Data! I the data! So, ah, so many mistakes. So, like, they don't even know who's in command it's of like, the mission? It's like, it's unforced errors. It's things yeah, that right. didn't have to happen. Mistakes happen, but... Try not to. Like, try, try not to. Try not to. That's why that's why you plan. You plan, 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 plan. So that when a deviation happens, you have you've already repped a lot of it out. You kind of and you've got all that teamwork. So everybody mm-hmm. knows, oh, he's Ooh, in charge. Teamwork. Let's listen. You know, we all know what we're sort of our personalities are. If you don't plan and rep it out, you get this. You get this. Yeah. So, uh, it's chaos. Just chaos. Just absolute chaos. Yeah. Cool looking suit, though. <laughs> The suit's awesome. The suit's wave, awesome. the scene, the yep. feeling of going up yep. high, and then holy, shit, you know, whew. I mean, I guess, I guess, I wonder what has happened to NASA discipline because they're no longer like the big, big structure that they used to be. That's right. Maybe mm-hmm. they've lost a lot of the knowledge, a lot of the skills that they used used to have. That's right. So planning and training and repping mm-hmm. and teamwork—it's just all gone. Yeah, they don't they they don't know how to create it anymore. They don't know how right. to engineer it. They spend all the time farming. Well, they don't need it. They want engineers. They don't need engineers. They need farmers. They need them. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bran Bran breaks down. She, mm-hmm. yeah. I thought I was prepared. I knew the theory. I knew. reality's different. So Bran says she knew the theory, 
mm -hmm. and reality is different. Well, first off, if reality and your theory don't match, it's bad theory, right? That's right. That's that's like definition of what that means. It means you didn't have a theory that matched reality. It's a bad theory. It's a bad theory, right? So revise your theory. But also, I think she's comparing like Einstein's gravity theory to like space operations on the surface of the planet. Like knowing Einstein's theory isn't going to help you with operational effectiveness. <laughs> okay, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, <laughs> it was, I knew Einstein's equations, but it was hard. She's like, I knew the equations. Why did I need the instructions to assemble the furniture? Like, th those are separate. <laughs> those, are, those are separate things. <laughs> yeah. I can understand something very, theoretically very well, but actual practical application, not the same. Right. I can use the theory to help build things and understand things, mm -hmm. but operations, you know, going Should down there. Go sideways. Got to deal with that yeah. on the spot. Theory doesn't prepare you for that. Right. right. Well, I guess you could, could you come up with some kind of, theory of operations checklist absolutely and, i mean and yeah yeah theories of operations right. is what well, we do that all the time right like thinking about like what's going to happen and if something happens this is what you do if that happens this is what you do that's theory of operations right so that would be the appropriate theory to compare to what happened on the planet not einstein's equations to the what happened on the planet right i see mm -hmm. i had a different take on the scene Oh, okay. I thought the I thought the things that she was reacting to was like I knew the theory of time dilation. I knew that when I was mm -hmm. down on the planet surface, time mm -hmm. was going to move slower for me than than Rommel mm -hmm. normally up here. Yeah, but I thought she was reacting to like she knew it in intellectually, she knew it like uh, mathematically, but mm -hmm. to feel it like I, I just see. wasted twenty three years of this guy's life. Like mm -hmm. oof, like I was not prepared for the reality of how time dilation affects people. I see. Yeah, that makes that that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense because that's like I understand Newton's laws, but if I get rear-ended, it's like whew, whew. a Newton feels like that. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, like getting it's enormous. Like I under, yeah, like to feel right. acceleration. Like you can understand the theory, but to feel it. Whew. That's right. So that makes and that also like, makes and sense. And then to have it damage somebody else's life, like oof, it's different. Yeah, yeah. I see. Like I, I understand. I understand how guns work. Like, yep, yep. The chemistry, the physics, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. actually shooting someone very different. Very, oh. yep, <laughs> yep. Do you see my example? <laughs> <laughs> so, so do I this is this is possibly my favorite scene in film. I don't know. That's maybe strong. It's one of my favorite scenes in film. Just absolutely, just gut wrenching. Just it'll make so, you feel stuff fast. I I hundred percent agree. It just you know it's emotional. It's crying. Whew, but I also get mad. They didn't plan it out. And now this this is your consequences. What the fuck were you doing? That's right. I'm I'm sad for you, but I'm also furious because it didn't wait, have wait, wait, to be wait, wait, this. Let, way. Let's let's say let's say what's happening here. So okay. after <laughs> after the after the mission, after the Miller's planet, after the, mm -hmm. the water planet next to Gargantua, mm -hmm. super slow time mm -hmm. so so they come up to the to the endurance and they get a bunch of messages 23 years worth of messages coming in mm -hmm. and yep. so coop coop actually ignores romley completely and he's like i want to listen to the communications of my kids mm -hmm. so here he's like waving like my son had a child when i was away mm -hmm. yeah this one he missed is, all the moments he missed all the moments and his son is saying like you're a ghost of my past i need to let you go like I need to, I need to move on with my, which is correct like he needs to move on with his life and to live a happy life on his own yeah, but like yeah agreed but for Coop it's been like a couple months like, right it's just a gut punch yep his son became a man when he was away and and he missed it he missed it and the son missed him until he could not handle it anymore and he says I need right. to I need to stop missing you like right. and it, it's the right move that's right. And he misses Murphy's coming of age. Yeah. She's now mm -hmm. an adult woman with her own opinions and, and thoughts and feelings. And some of those feelings are fuck you. Like, yep. Yeah. Yep. Like so, a few, a few months ago from his perspective, this was his, his little baby girl. And, uh, yeah. he's seeing how he's failed her. Yep. So I think there's one more picture. Um, 
just it's a gut punch it's a gut, it's a gut punch. punch he just he missed all the moments and it's the love of his kids and they're pissed at him and and he was uh, unable to protect them from these feelings of hating him yeah it's of, just of abandonment of betrayal just it's so sad but i also have the f- just i get furious because he they know that was the consequences of going down to the damn planet and they didn't plan. That's right. They didn't rep it. They didn't, they knew it. What do you, <sighs> right. instead of being 32, she could still be a teenager. Right. It didn't have to be this way. Right. It might've turned out that way, even with the planning, but to True. not do the planning. That's right. And then to throw your hands up and say, this is the way it would have gone down anyway. No, 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 this is not the way that it would have gone. Why did my car catch on fire? Like, well, you didn't do the maintenance. Didn't do any maintenance. Like you didn't even look into doing maintenance. Like, of course, there's a consequence. Right. You can't. Ugh. So it was like this, this gut wrenching, like sadness and crying and anger and. But also, Cooper. you caused it. <sighs> but also, Coop, Coop caused it specifically. Yeah, and he's feeling the yeah. pain. He's feeling the pain. Yeah. Of of his daughter hating him, but he's not feeling the pain that he should. Of I fucked up that mission. Fucked it up. I fucked it up because I didn't think about it. Didn't think about it. Yeah. Should have gone to the library. <laughs> I mean, they have manuals. That's right. The That's right. They have. They probably. They even might even have a technical library on the ship, just in case they need to look stuff, which would be reasonable, just Absolutely. in case they need to look stuff up. Yeah. And they should have hit the books, you know, as best they can. Make sure mm-hmm. all the procedures mm-hmm. are fucking down. Dial in. <sighs> yeah, go down there with both Case and Tars, and be like, "You're here's your missions. Just execute them. Go." That's right. You don't even need to communicate with them necessarily unless something really weird happens. Yep. Man, are these the right people that we want to be sending to, uh, to space? You, you did say that right may, maybe NASA is so degraded at that point that this is the situation. I oh, gosh, gosh. Professor Brand also said it because because Coop was like, like a week ago, you didn't even know I was alive. And, and Professor Brand is like, we had no choice. So like they are dealing with whatever staff they have. Like, that's true that's true and i guess and, and, i guess the global population has declined which right. portion of that is going to be the u.s population and so you just have fewer people to select from you're going yeah. to get and you're going to get the cream of the crop may not be as creamy since the crop is smaller that's right in addition you have this culture that's like anti-engineering anti-tech all, that's right anti-tech yeah and they're all depressed and melancholy all the time they're not really thinking like Head to the stars. That's right. So the 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 pool of people is even smaller. And you need to keep it secret because you can't have that information leaking out that NASA is doing this project. So like the pool of people that could go to space is tiny. That's right. That's right. <sighs> Brutal. Brutal. The fortunate thing is that love transcends. Love is the one thing. Where love is the one thing. We're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. I, I just, I just, I just don't think that's true. I mean, Damn. Ob- object permanence transcends time and space. You know, if if I guess that's if right. you <laughs> if if you get on a plane and go to Sydney, Australia, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you exist. I'm not like burrowing through space and time, transcending. No, I just, I just know you're there. That's right, and it's not necessarily because I love you. I just, I just know you're there. Like, let's make, let's make it let's make it not a person thing. Like I, I could send a baseball bat with you, and the baseball That's bat's right. there. Like, I know I know it's there. I know it's there, right? Yeah. So if I have a feeling of love for somebody who's far away from me, I'm not transcending time and space. I'm just I'm just thinking about. I'm it. just thinking about it. You know what? Thoughts transcend space and time, time That's, and space. Right. Thoughts. I'm gonna send a thought to. Andromeda Galaxy right now. Done. Bing, 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 bing. Now they're liking and subscribing. They are liking and subscribing. The aliens. New audience. Yep. This is also a weird, a weird <laughs> scene for me because she's a scientist. And so it's like she has one bad experience on Miller's planet. Like mm-hmm. she watches the other guy die, which she's actually kind of okay with. And then she's now like, science out the window. Love is it's all about love. Right. And it, scientists like feel feelings like love. And absolutely panic and, and you know anxiety and you know shame and all these things maybe because she's failed on the planet, but that doesn't mean she's going to be like, well, Einstein's theory is f- no, yeah, throw it all like, away. No, 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 throw it all away. No, no, 
Right. I had an experience that I need to comprehend. Gosh. It doesn't mean I'm jettisoning a theory. So she's she's like 30 something, mid 30s maybe. Mm -hmm. That's kind of reasonable. Mm -hmm. That means she's throwing away, I guess, minus six. You don't she's like so. So she's like throwing away 26 ish years of academic training, like K through 12, the whole thing, mm -hmm. the whole all of her mm -hmm. uh, K through 12 undergraduate, graduate, mm -hmm. all of her training as her as her PhD. Like she's just just out the window, out the window. I mean, I would honestly, I would qual, I would disqualify her from mission status at this point. Like right. you've lost your objectivity. I can't, right. I can't trust she, you. She's not able to handle her emotions in the moment. Right. So she's 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 allowed to feel the emotions. She's allowed to have the emotions, but she yeah. needs to be able to talk about them quickly and directly to get into the be able to be effective mission wise. Right. But we did say that NASA is degraded. That's right. So. I think current astronauts are like tested for their their emotional and intellectual stability um, and mm -hmm. cognitive stability, whereas mm -hmm. maybe maybe not here. Maybe not here. I mean, so she, she's science. nepotism, right? That's right. That's right. God damn. It's Professor Brand's kid. Ne Nepo baby. Damn. And and the wife or lover of someone that's already on the mission. That's right. That's right. Getting a little. Uh... Well, in house here. Well, in house here, yeah. <laughs> I mean, great, super smart, mm -hmm. but also like, she's slipping. That's right. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh... That's right. Yep. I, I mean, I yep. want her. She's I slipping. want her to feel love. I want her to feel connection to other humans. I mm -hmm. want her to experience it, but also like, stay on task. Like, stay on task. I mean, she could even take like, hey, I need to disappear for an hour and get this thing processed. This yep. is what I need to do. Comes back Jill. out. And it's like back on tasks. Humanity is number, you know, we got to get back to it. Yeah. That being said, her intuition to go to Edmund turns out to be right. Turn to, yeah. Not right by accident, right by love. Right by love. Transcends. She has no messages from coming from Edmund for several decades, mm -hmm. but love, love knows love. to send her there. Mm -hmm. I'm down for that. Yep. So they go to man's planet. They go to man's planet and they're like flying through this beautiful stark scene, but they run into this frozen cloud. Okay, looks like normal clouds. Normal clouds. Doink. <laughs> Doink. Frozen cloud. <laughs> and then they land on the surface, which I guess an ice shelf of some type. <laughs> My question is, is it possible to have a cloud like this? Like it, it wouldn't be a cloud anymore, right? Like at, at the point where it's freezing into this crystalline structure, into, mm -hmm. this, into this ice structure, mm -hmm. it's going to be whatever the density is of ice, right? Mm -hmm. Like so, it, it yeah, it looks like ice surrounded by a cloud. So there's some kind of weather going on. Does but, that happen? I mean, I guess on Earth we have mountains, and mountains get covered in snow and glaciers, and then there'll be fog and cloud cover over the mountain. Okay, I've, so for, so for short times, because 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 I'm thinking like, I'm thinking if if it's cold enough for the water molecules to freeze down on ice, mm -hmm. then into a solid into ice, then if you have more mist around, more fog stuff, and then those water molecules should also like contact the ice and freeze down. But you're saying like if it's intermediate or in, in, intermediate if it's if it's like. Intermittent. If it's intermittent, mm -hmm. like you have a fog roll in, then it goes mm -hmm. away, then it comes in, and, uh, mm -hmm. then yeah, you can have fog and ice at the same time. Sure. Yeah, I, th I don't think clouds can be frozen water particles. I think that's a possibility. Like high in the atmosphere, a lot of times it'll be frozen water will be the cloud. Oh, okay. okay. But so I, for example, in, mm -hmm, the, in the stripes of Jupiter and Saturn, yeah. the white stripes is a frozen ammonia. So it's like oh. ice crystals up in the cloud. Right. It's just it's just low particle density, so it's not forming like a block of ice. Right. But okay. I, do, I, I do think in, in order for you to have, say that the atmosphere was not dynamic at all, and okay. we had an ice mountain. Okay. I think if there was no weather, then eventually everything would, would fall out. Every, every particle would eventually just fall out of the atmosphere. I do think you need some sort of weather... Uh, so, so for for two reasons. One is that mm -hmm. gravity would just pull particles down. You get bat, gas particles floating up, and then any other mm -hmm. molecules that are heavy falling falling down. Mm -hmm. Second factor is that if you if it's ice, then it's just stuff will freeze to it and not float back up. 
Right. Where if it was like hot ground, then stuff could bounce off and go back up. Sure. Right. So it needs to be some kind of water cycle. Stuff's coming up into the atmosphere and precipitating down and, you know, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But could it be, I mean, if something was, sh- if ice, if an ice mountain was shrouded in a cloud of, okay. say, ice particles that we call a cloud, and we're flying through and we hit the, the ice, I'm going to say, oh, that's an ice mountain surrounded by fog. <laughs> That's right. right. That's I'm right. not going to say, "Ooh, that's the whole thing is a cloud." Like, no that's way, right. right? Yeah, I wouldn't say. Yeah, I would not say it's a whole cloud. I would say it's a cloud surrounded surrounding an ice block. I think so. Right. Hmm. So, is it possible to have a solid cloud? I think. I mean, so semantically, or or, or via by word, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a cloud anymore. It would just cloud anymore. Just be an ice block. It would be an iceberg. Right. So the question is then maybe this atmosphere is somehow buoyant enough to hold icebergs up. Okay. Just like how ice floats in water. Yeah. But now ice floating in dense atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Which means, I guess, way down in this planet, there's some sort of dense atmosphere holding up the ice. I guess that's possible. I guess. But that, I mean, now we're asking can a gas support a solid based on buoyancy alone? I don't know if gases can do that. I think I think they can if the solid is you know light enough, but ice okay, is so pretty dense, right? If you get like a if you get like a krypton gas, so real real heavy, or that whatever mm-hmm. that that high the highest Z noble gas is, mm-hmm. then you can mm-hmm. float some aerogel on it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and I guess if it's really high pressure, really high mm-hmm. density, you could start floating stuff on it. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But ice would be a tough tough. I don't know if that's possible. Ice, ice is pretty dense. Ice is pretty dense. Even the so, like seven or seventeen, whatever many different forms of ice there are, they're all, they're all still dense. Like, they're all still compared, dense, compared yeah. to a gas. Compared to a gas. Although I don't really, I don't have hands-on experience with right. krypton gas or whatever that the heaviest element is. Mm-hmm. And there's billions and trillions and quadrillions of planets in the universe. Could some weirdness happen on something, on some planet out there where there's floating ice? I cannot. Can I say no? I want to say no. I wouldn't yeah, call it I a guess, cloud. Though. Okay. So to be to be scientific, I would say very unlikely. To within all of my training, no. But mm-hmm. also, there's a whole universe out there. Yeah, maybe there's a whole universe out there. If it's a one in a quadrillion chance, it probably exists. Yeah, only got to prove me wrong once. What is I understand OG? The theory. Oh, <laughs> so here's the, here's the, uh, the, the noble gases. And so mm-hmm. we get helium and then just heavier down. So I guess radon would have been a better example mm-hmm. for me. Um, and then even lower than that is organessin or, or organessin. Organessin. Yeah. Have they, I guess they've manufactured organessin. that now. Synthesized it. It's, it's a thin synthetic chemical element. Symbol OG atomic number 118. Mm-hmm. First synthesized in 22 at the joint Institute for nuclear something. Okay, so if we were to actually create this in enough quantities that we could create a gas on an atmosphere, could we float ice? I'm still going to say probably not. I have no intuition. I cannot say. Yeah, yeah, but it's heavy. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be heavy. This is this is our best chance. Yeah, that's our best chance. The OG noble gas. The OG noble gas. That's right. That's right. Got lots of ice. Ice. Okay. <laughs> Man make man M A N N man makes this statement about death. It's a uh, curious. I'm not sure if I agree with that. The machine doesn't improvise well because you can't program a fear of death. Right. So he's saying that you can improvise well when you have a good fear of death. Mm-hmm. So I terrified a raccoon this morning, and his improv- improvisation skills were incredible. That's right. That's right. He started, he stood up and did some like miming stuff, like freestyle miming. And then you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll give you some snacks now. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you really, so say you're having trouble with some sort of physics theory, Mm -hmm. you know, just (laughs) scare the bejesus out of yourself somehow. That's right. And you'd be like, damn it, I got it. That's right. If I, I, if I'm at a comedy club and I'm going to do some stand up, it's like there's got to be a guy behind the stage who's going to shoot me, going to poison me. Like, okay, I got to get a comedy right now. <laughs> got to get an right. improv right now. <laughs> yeah, if you go to an improv, um, 
studio or whatever mm -hmm. play, then everybody's actually terrified on on screen on stage. So all works. those all those jazz musicians, <laughs> they're they're all under death of threat of death. You they don't are. you don't have a s awesome solo, kick ass licks. Like no, I'm not, I'm not feeding you. Right. That is that why I'm bad at jazz. That's right. Because I haven't tasted the fear of death. That's right. You need to have high stakes, high stakes on you at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Every moment in your life should be, I do this or I die. <laughs> what the heck? Yep. That's what he said. That's what he said. So I love this scene. This to me feels like how an explosive decompression would go down as far as I understand. Hmm. Suddenly, quickly, and death quickly. Poof. Don't finish your sentence. There is a moment. <laughs> Gases are powerful. Right. There's, there's, yeah. So it's, there was some, we did this in a seminar. It was like calculation of like the latent energy in the gas. And people were like, oh, it's nothing. It's just gas. But it's like, like compare that to dropping a bowling ball. People were like, the bowling ball is so heavy. It was going to hit the ground mm -hmm. so hard. But if you think about the energy inside of the gas, there's pressure and there's temperature. Mm -hmm. And so there's actually like enormous amounts of energy. Right. And so if you consider the pressure from inside of one atmosphere to the pressure outside space, so zero, like that's a huge amount of force just, just, just ready to pop. Right. And you give it some outlet, energy. some crack, some fault, and it just finds rapidly just out. rips stuff apart. Yeah. There's, there's an enormous amount of energy in it. Yeah. And it's relentless. It just won't it, stop it's, it's not linear you can't even walk yeah. it back it it, right. it it cracks it's gone right and it just rips it it causes a cascade that rips apart this pretty strong spacecraft mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. incredibly powerful don't fuck with gases uh, yeah you get you get some amount of oxygen because humans need oxygen to breathe and then when you just start ripping apart circuits there's going to be a short amount of time where that circuit is then the breakdown voltage where it's broken but it's close enough for an arc to happen. If you get that arc with an oxygenated environment, then psh, explosion, like actual explosion, not just ripping stuff apart, but like combustion right. explosion. Right. Terrifying. Terrifying. I think this is a sign that man is like lost it. Like he's, he's, right. he like, first of all, he's saying things about like survival and like, like okay. yo man, like, what, like yeah. what are you doing here? Like we're trying to set up a colony. And, and then he and does this weird thing about like he lies to people so that he can escape by himself. Like what? What? Like get get Doctor Brand and Romilly at this point. Get them on your on board with you. Like I get it. I get it that that Cooper like wants to go home. Okay, you can't work with him, right? But like the other two, like they're still on the mission. That's right. Why did he abandon? Why did he lie? Why did he not try to work as a team even though he was weak? Also, he, does he forget how gases and airlocks work? Like he's completely lost it. That's right. Right. He's NASA trained, and so he should yeah. know docking procedures. And he like ignores it; it just blows past. Right, and to be so careless with an airlock seal—I mean, mm -hmm. that's a basics no-no. That's that's your lifeline. Right, Can't you need the atmosphere to breathe. Yeah, so he's—it's just he's just completely lost it. No good. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Okay, so so. <laughs> Brand and and Cooper make it off, and mm -hmm. then they slingshot around the black hole, and mm -hmm. they quote Newton's laws in order to justify why Cooper has to leave. Well, let's watch it. We'll see. Commander one, Trust off. prepare to detach. Mark. Detach. Okay, they get rid of Tars. Goodbye, Tars. Yeah. Goodbye, Doctor Brand. He's gonna drop into the black hole, send out messages. Mm -hmm. They ran out of fuel. Ranger 2, prepare to detach. What? No! No! Newton's third law. You gotta leave something behind. Don't. Detach. Okay. I felt so, for her. So, she was getting left. She's now on yeah. the mission alone. On the mission alone, yeah. Why, why was that wrong? Newton's laws are in force, right? In force, that's fun. Yeah, so so they say Newton's third law. In order to go forward, you got to leave something behind, which is which is right, right. Mm -hmm. So you you push something, and then when it goes away, you go the opposite direction. Okay. Um, that makes a lot of sense for rocket propulsion. Like your rocket's going up. In order to do that, you have to push gas down. Okay. That's not what happens here. 
So let's watch the detach. Okay. The, the detach is just a disconnect. There's no like, there's no like ranger pushing. No, the ranger's not uh, pushing the ship forward. And then therefore the ranger gets yeah. pushed back. The ship gets pushed forward. Um, what we're seeing is the ranger just gets disconnected. And then when we see a little bit further, mm -hmm. we see the ranger. The ranger's falling towards the black hole. Yep. Makes sense. And the endurance is leaving the ranger behind because it has rockets. Mm -hmm. yep. So this isn't Newton's third law. Newton's third law is for every action, there is a reaction that has the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. So, yep. so if I push the wall, the wall pushes me, and that's why I bounce backwards. This is this is not that. The, the ranger's not pushing against the endurance. This is Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. Mm -hmm. And so by reducing the mass that the endurance has to lug with it, then it, for the given amount of force, which is whatever the engines can supply, then it can get a better acceleration. It can get away fast, faster. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it should have been, should have been Newton's second law. Right. So Newton's third law is in force with the engines on, but right. they're just dumping right. mass. This is not Newton's third law. Exactly right. Which is, which this is a weird moment to me because I was like, it, like it, it caught my attention because for a movie that's they like the writers room did a lot of research like they, they, mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff uh, in the science in this film like dialed in nice and tight like exactly how mm -hmm. it would happen right um but this one is like a first year undergraduate high school as well um introductory physics where that they got this one wrong yeah yeah that's weird because it's it's also a quick fix it's like third law second law quick look up yeah yeah interesting my, my brain, when I watched Oops. it, my brain just fixed it. I was like, they're dropping mass. Done. All right. Make them go faster. But, but it's actually Newton's third law isn't the relevant one. It's not the second relevant law. to this second law. Yeah. In fact, this is why we do staging in rockets. Reduce the mass so that the thrust makes higher acceleration. S staging means like you have this big old tall rocket structure, mm -hmm. and the bottom is like your first engine is, sends you up. And then yeah. when that's out of fuel, you're like, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Drop second mass. engine. I see. The second engine only yeah. has to push the second engine's worth of mass. That's right. That engine, yeah. it's done already. Yeah. And that's an F equals MA principle, not a action reaction principle. Hmm. I like it. That's a good catch. Super cool, though. Hmm. So we here we see this is the endurance, like the ring, and we're seeing the black hole gargantua down here. Um, yep. I guess let's let's see what is this. It's a black hole in the middle. Yep, black hole. There it is. This ring here looks like mm -hmm. an accretion disk. Yep. Accretion is when when a black hole, I guess also stars do this too. When they come upon other mass in their so their star mm -hmm. system, they will also like grab it and pull it in through the gravitational uh, force and pull it in. And so out here, this look, this is so nicely done. Out here, it's just dust, a little dark stuff, mm -hmm. not producing light. I mean, you can see it there, yep. but it's like dark and dim. And then as it gets pulled in closer, it gets pulled in faster, 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 tighter, tighter, tighter as it goes around the ring. Mm -hmm. And so as the gas density, the, the particles, the dust gets closer, 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 friction gets hotter and it gets bright. This is, this is perfect. This is exactly what mm -hmm. an accretion dish should look like. Yep. Uh, what's going on up here, though? So my understanding of this is I don't, I don't understand GR, general relativity, super well. But I think near the black hole... The accretion disk is, is a 2D disk, like a ring of Saturn, but mm. space is so warped near the event horizon of the black hole, near the surface of the black hole, that we're actually seeing the disk behind the black hole, the light's being bent up and over and into our eyes. So uh. we're actually seeing the, the on both on top and bottom, the backside of the disk. I see what you're saying. It gives us this interesting shape That's to it. Sick. That's, yeah, okay, yeah, so this, is, this is exactly right. So just like, <laughs> so just like, um, like gravitational lensing, so if you look mm -hmm. at a nearby galaxy, uh, you may see a far by far galaxy mm -hmm. behind it. Now it should be blocked because it's like a line of sight, right? But no, no, no. The nearby galaxy bends space time, mm -hmm. so that you see an entire ring of stuff behind the background. In fact, if you can get a perfect a perfect lineup of a nearby, if here's Earth and here's a nearby galaxy, here's a far by a far away galaxy, you can get a perfect lined up. You get an Einstein ring. An Einstein ring is like you get a dark spot with a perfectly lit up galaxy behind it. And mm -hmm. so what we're saying here, I'll just repeat what you said. You get an accretion disk, and the accretion disk forms in a two D plane, just like just like Saturn's mm -hmm. rings and, Ju and Jupiter's mm -hmm. rings, also Neptune's rings. They all form in a disk, and so really we should be seeing a disk, but because of the of the of the black hole right in the middle, we're getting mm -hmm. curved space time. 
which actually means we're seeing we're getting images we're getting we're getting mm-hmm. light curve from the back side of this disc yeah i think the way sick. they calculate this, this is they like if if light is emitted from the disc mm-hmm. right it, instead of going straight it'll get bent around it follows goes, the, it follows the space time the space time is curved the, yeah, the space, space time is curved so it looks like an image of the disc because the light is bent so much and that happens on the bottom side too ah oh, so good it's so, so weird good. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> they did, the writers did their, their homework. So. Yeah, so good. This is weird though. As far as I understand, the accretion disk is like a wash with x-rays and alpha oh, particles right. and plasma and charged particles. Right. I don't know if a human can survive like a minute. I don't think so. In this. So so anytime you get a charged particle that curves, you get and you get a radiation that shoots out. Mm-hmm. And so all this, this disk is just, charge particles curving, curving getting smaller and smaller, smaller. Mm-hmm. so yeah it should be just blasted the radiation right um, i guess it could be sh- are dead. Yeah. i don't uh, know if there's any shielding that could overcome that yeah. <laughs> not like that not like yeah. yeah 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 they're dead for sure so cool so cool though super cool but dead. Super cool. yeah but dead. well they're not dead they survived it's okay yeah they'll survive for a little bit <laughs> okay um so so <laughs> after after Cooper detaches, uh, mm-hmm. he detaches and fills in the black hole. Let's watch. Let's watch what he does. Blackness. A visual event. It's all black. Okay, okay, okay. In the first five seconds, that's already the detail in here where you're like, she's listening to Coop. His, his, his communication is getting more static, 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 and then just full static. That's, that's dead on. As he goes into the black hole, she loses communications. She loses communications with Cooper, and then she's like, I'm alone. Like she, she has, she has no help. Cooper's gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's watch again. Heading towards blackness. A visual It's all black. It's gone. Charles, you read me? Uh-huh. It's all blackness. Okay. So this is now inside the black hole. Flashes of light in this We have no end. It's because imagination only at this point. Yeah. Uh, like what is that? Uh, Holy sh! This is weird. This is weird. But cool. But cool. I give science fiction a lot of leeway once you're inside a black hole because as as scientists like we cannot we have never seen and we cannot see inside a black hole so if you're if your characters in the movie are going inside a black hole do whatever you want like do whatever you want yeah super get, fun. get as creative as possible because we don't we have some guesses yeah but yeah go to town there was a detail here that i i really liked that they did so when you get near a black hole you get spaghettified spaghettification i guess as a verb mm-hmm. and so so what is this it's it's when you're nearby a black hole there's differential gravity so the pull like say you were to drop feet first in towards a black hole the gravitational pull by your feet would be so much stronger than that your head you'd be stretched apart and you would die from that um, but that doesn't happen here and so so and I, I think that's actually that's okay so so they say that Gargantua is a very large black hole. And so when it's a very large black hole, it actually, the spaghettification happens significantly less. And because you need to be nearby the gravity, the, the, the black hole, in order for that, that it's a one over R potential. So the closer you are, the stronger you are, the stronger the gravitational pull is. So if, the, if Gargantua is a very large black hole, then that, that distance becomes very large, which means that spaghettification um, is less likely to happen. And so it can even ha- it, it's so much less likely to happen that it can actually happen deep inside the the um, the event horizon. So yeah, correct, correct that Coop would go inside mm-hmm. the black hole before getting stretched out, if at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, once you're inside, then you know, mm-hmm. do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've never seen inside a black hole. Yeah. There's also an aspect about from the outside watching Cooper fall okay. into the black hole. He would, for a distant observer. Who's far away from the black hole? So he would Brand. fall. Brand would see him. So Brand, yeah, he would fall, 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 and then time dilation become infinite at the event horizon, and he right. would just sort of sit still. 
right? Because as, as yeah. you get closer to the gravitational well, as you get closer to the black mm-hmm. hole, time, space time curves more, which makes space time slow down, slow down, slow down, mm-hmm. until the point where you get to the, to the event horizon and you are so slow that you're effectively frozen. Frozen, yeah. That's from Brand's perspective, but from Cooper's perspective, it doesn't happen. He just falls right into the black hole, into so cool. imagination. Into so whatever. It actually, since he ends up coming out of the other side back in the solar system, his image is still hovering on the black oh. hole, according to Brand. So there's like... In some sense, he exists in two places. Right. Super weird. Super weird. <laughs> It's not something meant for three-dimensional beings. Maybe the five D guys. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, yeah, of course, easy. Not even an issue. Not, yeah, not a problem. Yeah. So back on Earth, there mm-hmm. is Murphy. She's now a professor, and she's yep. doing some stuff <laughs> on the board. <laughs> um, let's yeah. let's see if we can figure stuff out. So, so I so, don't really recognize any of this. Go ahead. That's what does it say? Oh, for first, first, uh, yeah. Interactions with standard time flow, all combinations. Oh. Yeah. It says iterations. What did I say? Interactions. Oh, autopilot. Okay. Iterations <laughs> with standard time flow, all yep. combinations. I don't know what the symbol is. Variable weights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Auxiliary fields to me sounds like they've got a flat Minkowski space. Okay. And they're putting on an auxiliary field to represent the warping of space-time. Okay. Uh, and then the rest of it, I am not sure. It's just kind of, I mean, I'm not a GR person. Mm-hmm. I, I do lasers. And so, so uh, I mean, I recognize it as kind of GRE stuff. Like I like I, I recognize this, this is a tensor with, with some Einstein notation. Right. But I, I guess the phi right there, an orange is going to be some kind of potential representation, okay. but I don't know what that means in this case. If anybody knows, let us know. Because if, if you're a GR person, let us know. Let us know. Is this legit? Yeah, is it legit? That's a good question. Or is it just gobbledygook? I have no idea. I have no idea. I have I no, idea. no idea. Ln q squared e to the minus q squared over out. This looks like thermodynamics something. Mm-hmm. But I mean, but that also there was lots of things that look like this. Yeah, an, an exponential, sure, that's in a lot of stuff. So lots of stuff. Oh, I mean, but yeah. exponential paired with this natural log, with the two that comes out. I feel like I've done a lot of a lot of mm-hmm. homework with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thermodynamics mm-hmm. sucked. So painful. Three point five D. So the the five dimensional beings made this this library like structure, mm-hmm. and um, I have questions about it. <laughs> yeah. So does Cooper. <laughs> okay, Cooper. <laughs> Come in, Cooper. Okay. New fear unlocked. Huh? Being, being stuck in this thing. space inside their five-dimensional reality to allow you to understand it. You've seen that time is represented here as a physical dimension. You have worked out that you can exert a force across space-time. Gravity can cross the dimensions, including time. Apparently. <laughs> Even Tars is like, mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, so this was so super. First of all, first of all, in a black hole, do whatever you want. So, mm-hmm. so this yeah. super cool visualization. Um, I wonder though, like, can we can we actually visualize three, four dimensions? I guess right, because so you need three space and one time. Time is the fourth dimension, mm-hmm. but humans always experience it in a in a vectored way, in a, in a one directional way. So it mm-hmm. really like it's like three and a half dimensions because we we can never go backwards, right? Mm-hmm. And so these five dimensional beings are making a pseudo three and a half dimension three pseudo four dimension like like can cooper process this so i think there's no human that can picture any dimension spatial dimensions greater than three we have to do it your brain your your brain's not made for it so that's the question what if we had access to an actual 4d environment if we were if our 3d bodies were plonked into a 4d environment we looked around we'd be like Okay, I get it. Or would it just be incomprehensible? 
Right. So this, yeah, this is this is yeah yeah great. So so, gosh, this is such a deep philosophical question. If so, as far as we know, we're in a three dimensional environment right now. Right. We could exist in a four dimensional environment right now, but just not have the senses to be able to see it. Right. Or even if we did see it, we our brain might just delete it and be like, that doesn't make any sense. Mm. It could also be that we truly are in a three D environment. And if we went into a 4D environment, our brains could comprehend it. It's like, oh, I've never seen this before, but, but I get it. Now I, I get it. Okay, okay. I can figure that out. And the only reason we can't picture it is because we haven't experienced it yet. That's right. I doubt it, but could be. Okay, so we've been talking about like spatial dimensions. So like mm-hmm. X, Y, Z, and then I don't even know what the, what W would be, right? But I have a fairly, I have a looser definition of dimensions. Like if I, I've, I've made graphs that are, that are X, Y, Z, and then I needed to show energy. So... I, I mean, I can't plot that. But what I did was I did a color plot. So it's like mm-hmm. like if the peak of the shape here is red and then mm-hmm. lower down is blue, what that peak means that it's a higher energy. So I added to the color dimension. So in that way, like, yeah, I guess we're, we're able to express, we're able to visualize four dimensions and higher. You just need to map it on other things. Like like if you were to do like, uh, like not only if you did like an X, Y, Z, mm-hmm. And then like a hot spot, like if you were to touch it with your hand, like mm-hmm. that's the spot that has the most, I don't know, chemical potential. Mm-hmm. And then like a cold spot, like that has the lower chemical potential. And so, yeah, we can experience multiple higher dimensions than three, but we're really talking about spatial dimensions, which is which is something that no human has ever experienced. Right. And so coloring a plot to get an extra dimension seems as a valid way to express another dimension. Mm-hmm. but also feels different than a true new axis. Right. So a true, mm. a true new fourth, like spatial. I don't even, it, it's different. Right. I could go back and forth in X, back and forth in Y, back and forth in Z and back and forth in W. But what and is, d- what is W? Like? W be like, it's the fourth wall in movies. Yeah. Perpendicular to everything, but it's incomprehensible incomprehensible right now right now maybe right. einstein the sequel will come along and be like i can picture it no problem that's right <laughs> all i needed <laughs> all i needed was another few hours of movie and i got it <laughs> yep yeah interesting Super how would this all look how would they present it to us what they did was a space bookshelf but maybe that's the only thing <laughs> you can comprehend yep, yep. space bookshelf <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, it worked, right? I, I definitely see 3D space and I see like if I go to left, like it's backward in time, I go up, that's mm-hmm. right. If I go left, it's backwards in time. I go right, it's forward in time. If I go up, that is imaginary time and down is minus I imaginary time. Like, wait, wait, wait. Wait, whoa. Right? Because there's 3D spaces in this room mm-hmm. and then he still also has 3D motion himself. I see. So, like, it's actually a 3D space, and the room is a subspace of 3D space, but just still 3D. And then yeah. that's like a slideshow that, that moves exactly. through through the, the larger 3D space. So, which I, which I would totally understand this if it was a line. So it's mm-hmm. like it's like 11 a.m. is this room, mm-hmm. 12 a.m. is this room, 1 p.m. is this room, but he can also go up and down. And forward, oh, that's right. and back. There's, yeah. There's like different ways you can go through time. So, so these people, these aliens, don't even conceive time is linear. It's like time is also a three dimensional axis. Mm. Does that necessarily Which, mean that they do multiple realities? Because our time exists along one timeline, or like our our existence, our experiences exist one long timeline, but they can do this timeline and this timeline. Or maybe it's just that's the way they represent the one D ness. Because, no, that, that it would mean there's branches so that there's multiple realities. Yeah, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. They're five-dimensional stuff. And they're like, they're like, yeah, humans will get this. And then humans are like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm in a library box. Yeah. And the 5D so people it, are like, what? Why wouldn't you get it? It's like if we want to represent a line, but we have only a small sheet of paper, we can, we can make it back and forth. Right? Yeah. And then we can... And then we can <laughs> That's still a lot. Oh, okay. No, no, we take we take film and we want to store it. Yeah. So we roll it up. But it's still a linear thing that you can unroll. This is like this is 3D structure. You can't Right. You can't un- we can't comprehend right now how to unroll it. But okay, it's fine. rolled up. 
I'm saying that's what I'm saying. In, inside the black hole, do whatever you want. It's not a it's problem. 3D space frames rolled up in 5D space. That's right. And so easy. Yeah, with a moment's glance, you know, to think about it a little bit, maybe bang yeah. back of the envelope yeah. copula- calculation, you got it. Leave it as an exercise for the reader. That's right. Textbooks is so condescending. I love it. <laughs> I want to write a textbook. Yeah. And the last clip, watch and love. I'm going to find a way to tell Murph, just like I found this moment. How? Love, Tars, love. My connection with Murph, it is quantifiable. It's the key. The watch. We code the data into the movement of the second hand. Translate the data into Morse and feed it to me. So, so two things. Two things from my perspective. One, I'm not sure if I want love to be quantifiable. Because then because then now that it's quantifiable, it's not eph- ephemeral. It's not like it's not indescribable. Mm-hmm. It's like measure it. This is how much you got. Mm-hmm. Like this is how much you deserve. Like I kind of want it to be this ambiguous stuff. Um and then secondly, like you coop like, this is the same logic that bran used like like a few like mm-hmm. when they just got off of miller's planet like love is 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 can translate across space and time and then and then koopa's like no shut up i don't believe you anymore and then he used the same logic well, yeah because he's he's grown as a person before brand was being ridiculous <laughs> and she yeah. was right but for the wrong reasons but yeah. now that cooper has experienced love himself it's right no, it's okay. Fun. Yep. Okay. Well, <laughs> me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He's okay. Character development. He's a better person now. I mean, he should go and apologize to Brand. Um, someday. Someday. If she's not already dead, but yeah, sure, whatever. If, if she's not. <laughs> so, so the the this movie is. So. Cooper goes out to Gargantua. Falls into Gargantua. And the way humanity is saved is Murph gets the data about the black hole sent through the space bookshelf, connected through the connection of love to the second hand on Murph's watch. Yeah, that's a good synopsis. Okay. I'm just saying that's a little... Why the watch? Dialed in. Send it to send it to a hard drive. <laughs> That's right. That, that can also store bits. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, she doesn't leave her computer. Actually, do they even have a computer in the house? They may not. Oh, they, must, those, they, they must. They have a laptop. Be, That's right. Yeah, yeah. You can't find a hard drive in. Oh, you're not. You don't love the hard drive, so you can't connect with it. That's right. But like, how could he connect with the watch? He doesn't love the watch. He. So the way he connects with the watch is there's like these gravity filaments and he like tip 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 which then Mm -hmm. which then guides where gravity is falling i guess and then that's where like so if you tap the the filament Mm -hmm. that's where dust would land and so then he uses the filament and he taps tap taps it and then he like Mm -hmm. messes with the watch until the gears (laughs) are broken and then it's stuck in this uh, this morse code time loop Mm. So once once Murphy understands that the connection to Cooper is created through love, and that's how she's getting the data, she should just like go buy a hard drive and like sleep with it, like, leave, leave it there, <laughs> leave, leave it there. No, like put it like next to her in bed and like hug it and be like, I love, I love you, hard, hard drive. drive. And Cooper's like, ooh, store all my data for about ten years. Like, ooh. Yeah, I can. Yeah, in is that, is that, got it. Is that an ATA connection? Absolutely. Mm. Holy cow! An eighty-eight connection, <laughs> but I guess that's right because they've thrown away like modern, modern exactly. um, connections. Yeah, yeah. No more, no sad. But and it's faster. It's much. It's still significantly faster than a second hand of a watch. An ID. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Gosh, why must communication be simple through this gravity barrier? Or we're saying that it has but, to but, be. But even through a hard drive, that would still be okay because then it's just it's just yes, no, just bits. Yes. Right. Oh no! But that would be now. That would now be electromagnetic. It needs to be like mass data, not not magnetic data. I mean, push push the electrons. There you go. In, in, <laughs> That's in, right. in the cable. That's right. The electrons <laughs> still have mass, so you just push them. That's right. Just push them, and then and then you transfer into charge. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, how long, if you, <laughs> the quantum data of the singularity, it's going to be significant amounts of data. The bandwidth of the second hand in Morse code of the watch, is that going to be enough bandwidth? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's very little throughput. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you get, um, I don't know, several hours to decode a Morse code. Yeah. No way. No way. No way. Yeah. <laughs> And there's really like all these books here and no data written to them. Just the watch. Just the watch. Well, I, as far as I'm understanding it now, that it has to, he can only communicate with something that Murph has a connection with him with. Oh, is that what it is? So the watch, he has a watch, she has a watch. Hmm. So because she doesn't love a hard drive or it's not connected with Cooper, he can't write to a hard drive. I, ah, oh gosh, I'm not sure. Okay, so I thought that the reason he found that location in the library place is because of love. Like he used yeah. his like emotional connection to find her. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't, I did not think that he needed an emotional connection with the object to communicate with her because he also does like the flipping of the stuff to make the dust patterns. And, and he's like, not in love with the sand. Not in love with the sand, the dust, the floor, whatever, right? Yeah. Maybe he so, is. I don't know. Maybe maybe he has a little a lot of connections with his house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they need to go find a hard drive that he likes from his like, old laptop. Baby's first hard drive. He lost connections with it. That's right. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His first laptop. I mean, it's, it, it might be a hard drive, but it would still be better than a watch. So much better than a watch. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as Murph figures that out, that's what she should do. But she's already she already did the Eureka. She's done. Like, I'm not interested in this anymore. Well, we don't know. Oh, yeah, that's true. She already did the Eureka. She, only, she just needed the watch. That was all she needed. That's right. Eureka. That's right. <laughs> okay. Who's going to clean that up? She made a mess all over the place. Somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that was Interstellar. Hopefully that's next uh, time we'll do, there's like a sequel. I hope a sequel is super fun. Like an Interstellar, like they go inside the star. Mm-hmm. Just dying. It's just dying. It's just mm -hmm. the story will be fire. Hot, hot, hot. But there's plenty of places for a sequel to occur. Like I, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested in how one the humans got off the Earth and then they solved mm -hmm. their blight problem. Like, right. could they have brought blight with them to their new like spinning cylinder space mm -hmm. colonies? Um, and then also Brand. Brand is still out there on that That's world, right. like colonizing. And if if they're no long if humanity is no longer on the brink of extinction on Earth and they're in the stars, I mean they're going to start colonizing places. They have the wormhole to go through, and they would start to explore it because their now eyes are back up at the stars. So they're going to start going into Gargantua's neighborhood and explore yeah. all the worlds there. So this universe is wide open. Wide open. Yeah, I don't think a sequel will be made, but you never know. Science fiction. See ya. See you next time.